El Rafai raises alarm over elements in Aso Villa sabotaging APC's chances in the elections as Bola Ahmed Tinubu claims lingering fuel scarcity and the redesigning of the Naira uh, were targeted against him. And INEC predicts fuel scarcity may affect logistics come 2023 elections. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Governor Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna State has said that some elements in the presidency were working assiduously to ensure the failure of the All Progressive Congress APC in the, this month's presidential election. Now, he also said the same forces were responsible for the current crisis created by the petrol subsidy, which is making the country waste over six trillion naira annually. And also, Bola Tinubu has made claims that some powers in the administration of Buhari were working to ensure he does not win the exercise, noting that they were behind the lingering fuel scarcity and the redesigning of the higher denominations of the Naira. Now, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubaka, had earlier advised the Central Bank of Nigeria against further extension of the deadline for the exchange of the old Naira notes after the expiration of the Apex Bank's 10th February deadline. He warned that another extension of the grace period will destroy the purpose and objective of the currency redesign. Well, joining us to discuss this and more uh, is Alfonso's Eba. He is the All Progressive Congress Chairman in Cross River State. And also joining us is Onoja Ilemona. He is the head new media department of the People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and good evening. Good evening. Great. Um, I'm going to start with you, uh, Mr. Chairman, because um, this is your party. And it sounds really incredible for some, um, for the want of a better way to describe it, a bit preposterous. If the APC seems to be accusing the APC of sabotaging the APC, um, why do you think that the APC is suspecting people in the presidency, people who are supposedly, um, they're supposed to take over from, um, of trying to sabotage the elections? To what end? Mr. Eber, I think you need to unmute yourself so that we can hear you. Mr. Abad, I don't think we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Go ahead. Governor Nasiru El Rufai is not a careless talker. But let me take you on a bit historic, historical perspective to what appears to be a reiterment of what Governor Rufai has said today. You will recall that the National Economic Council met sometime last year and came up with a suggestion and almost agreed that the issue of fuel subsidy is no longer sustainable. It was thought and agreed that the landing cost of PMS in particular was around 300 Naira or thereabout. And therefore, it was better to put an end to this escalating cost of payment of subsidy. Today, kerosene, diesel is no longer subsidized. But Nigerians have got to live with it. The entire agreement has been that we're just subsidizing the rich at the expense of the poor. It will be better for first subsidy to go. That was agreed. Implementation became a problem. So all Governor Rufai have said today is that a position that was taken by the National Economic Council, why did Mr. President go against this position that would have been better. To him, it was postponing the evil date. And that evil date 
is worse now that we have few days to election and the worst kind of petrol scarcity never experienced in this country is what we are facing now. That you will buy fuel. In my own place in Calabar, we are buying for about 420 naira a liter. My family went to Delta a few days ago. They bought for 500 and something. Would it not have been better if we were buying fuel for 300 to 350 and will not queue and subsidy will end? That was all he said. I'm curious as to why the APC is asking the APC this question. It's interesting because Mr. President was one of the people who were in the forefront of the Occupy Nigeria. And you remember, I'm sure vividly, why Mr. President El Rufai and the likes of them were in the forefront of that particular march. What was it about, if you do remember? I recall that in 2012, during that attempt to remove first subsidy, and I think subsidy cost then was put at about... 800 billion to about 1.2 trillion. Mm -hmm. And it was thought that it was a fraud. One expected when Mr. President came in, and being a man of integrity that is respected by all, and after seeing what we call fraud, and after establishing that it could go, there would have been no need delaying the removal of subsidy. I agree totally that if there is anything that ought to go, is the issue of subsidy. So that the 8 to 10 trillion today that has been paid as subsidy can be put into other developmental projects. I am happy that almost all presidential candidates have said subsidy must go. Okay. So Aerofire have not said anything wrong. How does this removal of fuel subsidy um, turn into a saboteur of sorts, or be, be translated into sabotaging the campaign of Bola Med Tinubu? Yeah, you know, whatever APC that is the government in power does today, it stands to rub on the minds and feelings of Nigerians who are going to be a lotterate. So all that uh, Governor Erufai have said is that those who advised Mr. President against implementing this very all-important fuel removal, uh, subsidy removal, may be doing what will put the masses of Nigeria against the government in power. And it will not be good for us. Hmm. The hardship is biting everybody, you and myself inclusive. Hmm. I am not even happy. I am not happy as a member of APC. I am not happy as a Nigerian that I am made to go and queue and wait for several hours to buy fuel for 420 naira. It is better the subsidy goes so that we buy it at the landing cost. Let me come to you, Ilemona. Now, um... A lot of people had been attacking um, the presidential candidate of the um, APC, Bola Met Tunubu, saying that he was attacking President Buhari over the new Naira issue and, of course, uh, fuel scarcity. I'd like to quote him directly. Well, um, the presidential candidate of the APC had denied attacking Mr. President over fuel and new Naira. I'll tell you what his media and publicity director um, for the campaign council had to say. Mr. Bayan Anuga, in a statement, explained that the, the, the opposition, which is the PDP, um, was working in cahoots with fifth columnists um, who were the ones who were bent on inflicting avoidable pains on hapless Nigerians to avoid, or rather, to achieve a political plot. He goes on to say that the PDP and Atikus camp are the ones that issued a knee-jerking response, derailing from issues, distorting his views at the Abel Kuta rally to create a wedge between him and Mr. President. He said, when the guilty are afraid of being uncovered, they try to push back with red herring. Now, I just said at the beginning of this show what your principal uh, said in response to the Naira issue. I'd like to hear from you, Lemona, because they're saying that you are in cahoots, your party, uh, is in cahoots with fifth columnists. Who are these people? Um, these people are a figment of the imagination of the people in the APC and in the camp of, particularly those in the immediate camp of the APC presidential candidate Ashwa Dubola and Metin. They don't exist. What, what we are seeing is Finally, from a selfish perspective, they have gotten to feel the consequences of in 
the sentence. The consequences of bad governance, the consequence and a myopic approach to governance that the Nigerian people have been compelled and forced to live with for the last seven years. Anybody who says that this pure scarcity is only just now being designed to sabotage a Jew is not saying the truth. Nigeria has dealt with a fuel subsidence. We have had a fuel subsidy since two, I say fuel subsidy, sorry, a fuel scarcity. We've had a fuel scarcity since around December 2000 uh, and 2021. Almost all of 2022, we were queuing for fuel, we were suffering lack and all of that. So anybody who says that this is new and only just is only just being designed now to charge Ashiwaju, it's not saying the truth. The person is not a witness of truth. Nigerians, and it shows the level of disconnect between the power brokers in the APC and the ordinary Elamona, Elamona, I'm sorry, we're having connection issues with you. Elamona, can you hear me? We're having, your, neck, your, your connection is breaking and we're not able to make up what you're saying. I can hear you clearly. Yes, I'm sure you can, but then we're having connection issues. I can hear you very issues. clearly. Okay, um, let's, let's hope that we can hear you clearly because for a, a second we couldn't hear you, but go ahead. I am saying that anybody who says now in 2020, in February 2023, that the fuel scarcity is designed to sabotage Ashwaju. Meanwhile, we have had this fuel scarcity since December 2021 and all of, all of 2022. We've complained about, when we complained about the short time for the implementation of the currency swap, APC people told us to keep quiet. Members of the APC told us to keep quiet. Members of the APC said it was the best possible policy. Members of the APC lauded it. Now, members of the APC are coming back to say that it was done to sabotage Ashwaju. All I have to say to them is welcome to the reality that the average Nigerian has had to live with for the last seven and a half years. The reality of badly sought out policies, the, rea the reality of bad governance that we've had to live with, they've been disconnected from it. And now, because the real elements that. Uh, Elemona, I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to. Elemona, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on, Elemona. I think we're going to have to take you out and bring you back in because we're really having a distortion and we can't hear you. We'll take you out and bring you back in. All right? Let's do that. Um, let's go back to the chairman of the APC in Cross River State. Um, during that El Rufai interview, which I was able to see a bit of, um, he did talk mostly about elements in the presidency, elements in Assel Rock who want to sabotage the presidency or uh, the presidential bid of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Let's break it down. When a party man says there are people in Assel Rock um, that are trying to sabotage their own person. It calls for a lot of questions and concerns. Now, Mr. President and the people who work in Asso Rock, or people who we consider as the presidency, are the same people who sat on that day when your party's candidate emerged. They didn't sabotage the candidate at the time, but then a few days to election, you're accusing these same people, who somewhat were by you, to make sure that your party man emerged. These same people are the ones that you're accusing. What does this say to the average person that you're asking him or uh, you know, whoever to vote or cast their votes for you when it looks like your house is not in order? What does this say? Uh, before I answer that question, let me first uh, make a corrigendum to the erroneous understanding of my friend on the other side. It is not as if there have been no scarcity in Nigeria. We are only saying the magnitude of this scarcity this time and the timing and the cost of getting a liter of fuel this time has never happened in Nigeria, where you will need to queue from a filling station when Ipman or tanker drivers are not on track 
and the government seems not to have said anything about what is responsible for this. And you are buying fuel at 500 naira a liter. It has never happened. That is why everybody is complaining about that. But to come to your question, I have said before that Governor Elupai is not one person whose talk can be considered as a careless talk. He is a regular visitor to the villa. He is a member of the team you can call the inner member of the kitchen in the villa. So when he speaks, people must take him serious. And let me take you again. You know me, I am not a fan. I am not a friend of Governor Wiki. But let me openly say this. It is time to listen and to recalibrate what Governor Wiki said before now. Oh, really? When he accused... Yes, yes, I must say this. Because it has got... Sorry, so, sorry, my, sorry Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm so sorry. I have to talk over you. The same Governor Wiki who your, your governor has been accusing of trying to destroy his government and, of course, oh, causing no, trouble in the me. PDP that made him no, no, leave. No, no, no. That same governor, we came, are we talking about mouth. the same no, person? No, no, no. Listen to me. Yes, there is only one governor, we came. And listen to what I'm saying. He said something. I said, what he said, it is time for us now to analyze what he said in relation to the arrogance that he accused his presidential candidate of perpetuating when he said that there are people in the villa that are working for, his, for the presidential candidate of his party, and that is why he's displaying such arrogance. All Governor Rufai have come to say today appears to be a corroboration of that allegation that was made by Governor Wiki. I'm not saying that Governor Wiki has become a saint. I'm not saying he has become a, a prophet that we should listen to. I say it is time to take that statement he made in relation to this cycle in the villa, seriously. But let me tell you why Asiwaju Bola Metinibu of Governor Rufai should not bother. We are field workers. I represent not just the interests of the progressives in the field, but I speak the mind of majority of members of our party who have today seen the emergence of Asiwaju Bola Metinibu as a proper candelabrum that has come to illuminate the whole dark end. We are going to the darkest moment of our time. And when you see a candelabrum, not just an ordinary candelabrum, a menorah in the build of Asiwaju, Ahmed Bola Tinibu, you know one. And but let me tell you the alliteration. If you read in the Bible, the book of Judges, 13 verses 9, the prayer of Manoah, they say, God hearkened to the heartbeat and prayer of Manoah. And the angel of God came again. We recall that before 8th of June, when Asiwaju got the ticket of our party, there was this same plan by this so-called element in the villa. And it almost led to confusing our national chairman, where he came out and pronounced yeah, Ahmed Lawan. He My pronounced answer. Ahmed Lawan as the consensus candidate okay. of the NPC. Okay. All of us in Nigeria, we stood up against it. Okay. I am the acting national secretary of Forum of State Chairman in Nigeria. We stood against it by the special grace of God. So, God came again. if I get so, you I clearly, you if I get you clearly, you're saying that your our president, Mr. President, Muhammad Buhari, is working against his own presidential candidate to make sure that he Nobody. does not emerge. I'm trying to understand no. what this means because if you're accusing the presidency, the presidency does not just comprise of other people, you have the vice president, you have the president, you have the people that work in the executive council. So you're accusing whoever you call the presidency, including Mr. President, of trying to sabotage Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Is this what you mean by something happened and then an angel? I mean, I'm trying to understand this. APC pointing <laughs> fingers at the APC. And now you're also telling me that Atiku Abubakar, who is not a member of the APC, is is working with people in the presidency to scuttle Abola Ahmed Tinubu's election, it's preposterous. But help me understand, please. No, no. Before you use the word preposterous, let me correct you very fast. If President Buhari is working against Asiwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, I will boldly come out here and tell you, Mr. President is working against our candidate. I will tell him, Mr. President, you cannot do that. If nobody will say it, I, Alphonsus Oga Eba, 
state chairman of APC in Cross River State, will tell Mr. President, President Mohamed Buhari, that you cannot work against Asiwaju, Bola, Ahmed Tinibu. But he is not doing that. I was present during the unveiling of our presidential candidate and the campaign money, campaign presidential team. And I listened to Mr. President. I okay. could feel his body language. He okay. is working for Siwaju, Ola Ahmed Tinibu, and nobody is accusing him of that. When they say some element, and don't forget, it is not everybody in the villa that is an APC member. And Governor Erufai said more of that. You mm. have other this human beings that are there that are apolitical. Perhaps okay. they call the shot. Their views are respected. And these are the elements, because I recall and I got to know that there was never a time our national chairman, Senator Abdullah Yadamu, had any relationship or meeting with Mr. President or any key person to have come out to make a pronouncement about Ahmed Lawan. Okay. But he came out and made that statement. It is still those elements around the villa okay. that we are talking about. Interesting. But we will not, we will not, and I say it on authority, we will not give any, any opportunity to okay. frustrate our sweat, I think we to have... frustrate our hard work. Okay, I think we have Elemona back with us. Elemona, I'm sorry, um, the network uh, was not friendly, but now you're back. Let's see how great okay. it is. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I think that, and I say this as respectfully as possible, I think that the statements from my friend on the other side are indicative of the disconnect that APC has from the life and the well-being of the ordinary Nigerian over the course of the last seven and a half years. And it's very evident. Um, first of all, it is, let us remember, the issues here are the use of the fuel scarcity and the use of the Naira redesign to sabotage the presidential ambition of Ashwaj Bola Ahmed Tinubu. These are the consequence of two very badly sought out policies in the first place. These are the consequences of two very badly sought out or badly implemented policies in the first place. Let us remember, in addition to his role as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari illegally holds the role of Minister of Petroleum and Chairman of the Board of the NNPC, the government agency directly responsible for the importation, the distribution, and the pricing of um, petroleum product directly. How do you say you are accusing elements of sabotage without accusing Mr. President? When the bulk, the bulk, the bulk of these three offices responsible for the availability of petroleum products rest on his desk. But Elemana, there the, the are the people, people who have said over the people the people who have spoken on behalf of Mr. President many times who say, well, that's why there's a Minister of State for Petroleum. That's why there's an NMPC boss. And these people have a job to do. And Mr. President has the job of governing the country. Remember that the key roles belong to the president. The key roles are President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, um, chairman of the board of the NMPC, Minister of Petroleum. All of them key roles. But we will go even beyond that. Mr. President was on television saying that he thought that the currency redesign, the currency swap, was a well thought out policy and that it had come to stay and that there was no going back on it. Again, have the courage of your convictions. If you're going to accuse people, have the courage of your convictions. If Mr. President is out there saying, I am responsible, you are saying it's PDP members that are responsible, we are responsible for the implementation of policies that we have fought. Anybody who comes to television at this time, any member of the APC who comes to television at this time in 2023 to say, oh, subsidy removal is a good policy, ought to do so first with an apology to the Nigerian people. We in the PDP proposed the removal of subsidy 11 years ago. 11 years ago, the APC shut down this country. All the leaders of the APC participated. All the key, the three key people that we are talking about today were significant participants in the Occupy Nigeria protest in 2012. President Muhammadu Buhari, who said that anybody who says he's subsidizing anything is a fraud, 
was a frontline member, a frontline organizer for OM Occupy Nigeria. And she was the Bola Ahmed Tinubu, frontline organizer for Occupy Nigeria. Nastiku Eru Five, frontline organizer for Occupy Nigeria. Now, something back to tell us 11 years later that, oh, their eyes have suddenly opened. And your opening line is not an apology. You are not apologizing to us for having all the suffer that we've had, all the sufferings that we've had to do, we had to bear over the course of the last 11 years. That's not your open, opening line. The first thing you are not saying to us is, oh, we were wrong. And now, because we were wrong, we don't even think you should be able to trust our sense of judgment. After all, we've made you suffer so much. I'm saying all of that to say this. There's a disconnect. Anybody who says that these things are being dis designed in January, February of 2022, 2023, to frustrate Ashwa Dupala Ahmed Tinubu is disconnected from the reality of the ordinary Nigerian. The reality of the ordinary Nigerian has been that we have suffered uncountable economic losses for, for the past 14 months, occasioned by fuel scarcity. We have suffered the loss of life, occasioned by fuel, this fuel scarcity and this problem. We have suffered loss of productivity. We have suffered innumerable losses. So the, president, the presidential candidate of the APC will only speak up now and say, oh, it is being done to sabotage me, shows the selfishness that thinks that this suffering is about him. And it is not about the 200 million Nigerians who simply cannot live the life that they deserve under his political party. He thinks this is about him. Ashwaju would not have spoken if he thought he could win this election without, without the, if he thought he could win this election. He, the only reason why he's speaking now is because Nigerians have shown the determination not to reward the failure of the APC. And so this is an attempt, a failed attempt to distance himself from the APC-led federal government. So that it looks like it's those guys that did it. It's not me who is doing it. But this is the self-same person who stands on television and tells us that he's going to continue. He's going to continue the legacies of President Muhammad Buhari. And we can see that legacies that President Muhammad Buhari has bequeathed us with are legacies of sorrow, tears, pain, and blood. And anybody who promises to continue those legacies is actually threatening the life the welfare and the well-being of every Nigerian. Okay. And right here, you see a reason why they should not be rewarded with our votes in, okay. in 23 days' time. Um, while you were off, um, Mr. Ebert made a statement saying that maybe it's time to listen to Governor Wike, who has been saying that your principal uh, is working with certain elements in Assel Rock to sabotage the APC, to sabotage, you know, and he's, he's saying that maybe it's time to listen to Governor Wiki because there might be some iota of truth to it. What's your take on this? I will say this. My principal is ready and willing to work with anybody to recover Nigeria from the morass that we have suffered over the so last So it, could it be true that he has a hand in what's happening? Is he working to not. sabotage the APC? I that if, if, if we are blaming an opposition candidate, for the lack of availability of fuel, then what's the point of an election? Let's just give him the rings of power and from, from May 29th, let him just go ahead and solve our problems. If we're holding an opposition candidate responsible for CBN's monetary policy, what's the purpose? Why are we having an election? We should just give him the reins of power, throw him into office and hold him responsible. What you see here is evidence of the APC's refusal to take responsibility for their failures. Constantly, they have constantly spent the last seven and a half years blaming everybody but themselves. Well, at this point now, APC is actually blaming APC. So maybe there's, you know, there's, there's a light at this dark end of this tunnel. But the sum total of what APC blaming APC means for the average Nigerian is that we have found the people that are responsible for our pain and our suffering. And we cannot, we must not reward them with our votes. What okay. we have in front of us is evidence of people who don't know anything about governance, evidence of people who don't know anything about taking responsibility. We have to go. Evidence of people who don't know anything about implementing simple solutions that improve our lives, like welfare and well-being. That's what we're seeing here. Everything else that we're doing is nice city that we're just beclouding. We have to go. Ilamina, I'm so sorry, we have to go. 
we have to go. Unfortunately, time never waits for us. Um, I want to say thank you to the chairman of the All Progressive Congress in Cross River State. Let, 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 me, let me just give my closing word and just an answer. Very, very you. quickly, because we have to go now. I, I think he missed the point, but he has spoken from a point of a man who appears to be getting what out of himself. We have said just two things. The issue of the Naira redesign. Wonderful policy, but look at the implementation. That you cannot withdraw money from the counter in the, less, in the last 48 hours, 72 hours, after depositing all your money. What is a MFL doing? One of the bad products we inherited from the PDP. Who are those that are responsible? But, but for was appointed by Mr. President, who no, represents no, the APC. He was reappointed. Help me. Allow, allow me to land. Allow me to land. Who are those responsible for the subsidy regime? The entire contractors during the PDP era. And that is the point I have also said to the federal government that you must have the courage. We have to go, gentlemen. We have to go. We have to go. Unfortunately, we have to go. We will come back and have this conversation another time. I'm sorry we have to go. Time is not on our side. Thank you so much. Alfonso Zaba is the APC chairman for Cross River State. Elemona Noja is the head of New Media Department for the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing INEC raising alarm over fuel scarcity and the effect it might have on voting materials coming to the polling stations on election day. Stay with us.